I'm Caleb. I'm Jeanette. And this is Shirley Mental. Welcome to Tea Time number two. We're going to talk about all things politics today. I don't think we have any pop cultural things, mostly politics or social injustice issues. What tea are you drinking today? I'm drinking Vanilla Chai by Bigelow. And I'm drinking Peach Passion by Celestial Seasonings. All right, starting up, big kahuna number one, the United States hit our debt limit. Again, might I add? So the... the time, I believe. What? For the, I think the 22nd time. It's the 20th? I don't know. If it's raised, it'll be the 23rd time, but we might have hit it before and then just not raise it. I'm not really sure. But so you might be like, what the heck does that mean? Why is this important? Why does this matter? Well, an interesting thing to know is that the debt limit itself is not anywhere in the United States Constitution. Congress created it themselves, and the only way it can go away is if they get rid of it themselves. And they're not going to do that anytime soon. So basically, budgeting, right? Everybody's favorite thing in the entire world. Congress creates, eat like... They create a budget of how much money is going to spend. And because it's Congress and the government, they are required to spend that money. But they don't spend the money. The president spends the money. So, for example, maybe it'll be like, I want to spend $1 billion on books this year for the government. Now, the president has to spend a $1 billion on books that year because they are required to. And then people get mad at Congress. People get mad at the president. And the Congress can just blame it on the president. So it's a win-win situation. So the debt limit is the amount of debt that the United States can go into. Currently, it is set at $31.4 trillion. Now, what, so, I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. The Treasury Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen sent to Congress and was like, hey, y'all, we hit the debt limit. Right now, it's not a problem, but the Treasury, the Treasury Secretary, that is a mouthful, Estimated that by June, it's going to be a problem and the government won't be able to get paychecks. So what does Congress think about this? Well, the Democrats don't really care. They're also not currently the majority, so it's not like they can really do anything. And the Republicans want to cut the spending instead of raising the limit. Now, the limit has been raised 22 times so far, which is crazy. But you might be like, how do they raise it? Because debt is still money. That money comes from somebody, right? So how can you just raise the amount of debt? Well, a lot of it is treasury bonds. What that means is you give the government 10 bucks, and five years later, they'll give you 20. So it's an investment into the government. The majority of it is done by companies, but you can also get a personal treasury bond. So, yeah, that's the debt limit. I don't know what else to say about it. You have anything you want to add? What do you think um, they should do about it? Should like, do you side more with the Republican view that they should cut the spending, or the Democratic view that they should raise the debt limit? I personally feel like we should cut spending. I agree. Because although I don't really, I haven't done too much research onto this, onto where to cut said spending, but I feel like. We're already $31.4 trillion in debt. Raising it will just make it worse. But spending it, I mean, one thing that might come up with that is taxes are going to be raised. Mm -hmm. What do you think Um, should happen? I definitely agree that they can't just keep raising it because it's all they're doing is delaying the problem that's going to just keep happening. Um, But I don't agree with the Republican views on where they should cut the spending. They want to cut it a lot on, not, I don't know how much, but I mean, like most of them want to cut it on uh, like Medicare and um, other uh, senior citizen uh, spendings. And I feel like that's really targeting a specific group of people. So what would you cut? I don't know what areas there are to cut. I haven't done research into that. I just feel like they should spread it out more instead of just being like, oh, we're just going to cut all the spending related to this group of people. That's, yeah, I suppose. Oh, so why is it a problem that we hit the debt limit? 
because you might be like, oh, well, it's an imaginary number. So why does it really matter if we hit it? Well, when you hit it, basically you can't go into debt. And because the government doesn't receive enough money in taxes, they pay their employees via debt. So that would be like the government and hiring a road company to pave a road. They pave the road. They go to the government and they're like, hey, where's my paychecks? The government can't give them out because they don't have money to spend. And that yes. would be a major problem. And I don't know if this is the bonds you were talking about. But I remember in my history class the other day, my history teacher was saying that there is an uh, like American investment area. Like that's related to the government. I don't know if it's what you're talking about. Where like it is the highest like probability that you will g- gain money out of like any investments you can make. And I was, I was wondering, is that because we're just in debt so much and they're trying to, like, they're just putting so much money into it? And we just What's keep- interesting, though, is treasury bonds are only a temporary solution because in five years, the government's going to have to give you half or more or whatever you guys agreed to in the beginning. So are they really making money in the end? I don't know. Yeah. All right, you want to talk about Biden? Yes, yeah, so a couple months ago, actually, they didn't really disclose much of it until more recently. But in November, they, I think it was November 2nd? Uh, I'm not sure. But uh, early November, they discovered some classified documents in the pres- one of the president's homes. It was... Do you remember which home it was? The first one? It was his. Be- well, they found it at his beach house. Mm-hmm. And then that prompted them to search all of his former offices. And they found stuff there too. Yes, including his Willimantic. Did I say that right? I yeah. Don't know. I don't know what you're on. Or I literally just. No, uh, Wilmington. Uh, not Willimantic. I don't know where I got that from. Um, Will, Will, Wilmington residency on fr- uh, Friday the Friday is published January 21st so it would be Friday something Friday the Friday before January 21st Um, they found more classified documents and they were finding them in a lot of different areas They just, and while they were doing that search he went on like a weekend trip to another one of his homes and they searched it previously, but they haven't decided whether or not they're going to search it again. They don't. They haven't made any plans to. But I think some people are saying like, "Oh, we just moved stuff there." But I don't know how much I believe that because the team. One thing that makes this different than uh, what many of you may remember the Trump case, where he was found with a lot of classified documents. Um, Both cases are very bad and neither should have happened at all. But key differences between them is that in Trump's case, they were receiving like messages from the archives, National Archives, saying, hey, we think you have documents of ours. Where are they? Um, And Trump's team has had been ignoring them for months before action was finally taken and they were discovered. While Biden's team, the minute they discovered, his team discovered the first document by accident, um, the team was completely, what's that word, compliant with the investigation and uh, very open and, um, I don't I don't know how understanding, but like, because I don't think, he hasn't made a statement, has he? He did make one statement that may or may not have been sarcastic in one of his press conferences the reporters were like oh well what you really thought your documents would be safe inside of your corvette and he was like yeah well my garage is locked so you know oh yeah take with that what you will yeah he is not but i don't know how i feel about his responses but i feel like his team is handling it a lot better than trump's team was um he himself is like an iffy matter. I still don't know how I feel about him. Um, but basically, like, 
these are classified documents from both when he was uh, vice president and his time as a senator. Um, and they the level of classification has not been disclosed. But we do know that many of them were classified, basically meaning that he should not have had them at his personal residence, I believe. Like, they should have stayed yep. in government facilities. Um, so the fact that he has them now, oh, or even ever had them, uh, is very concerning. Um, even if he claims that, oh, they were in a locked garage, no one could get to them, it's like, he shouldn't have had them in the first place. And what are your opinions on this? It's becoming all too common. I mean, back in the, I want to say 2016 election, it was all about Hillary Clinton's emails. Then it was all about Donald Trump's documents. And now it's all about Biden's documents. And then sooner, the later on in this episode, we're going to be talking about how Pence was also found with classified documents. I feel like the people have lost a sense of respect on what they do. What are your thoughts? You already kind of stated your thoughts. Yeah. I don't know what else to say. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I definitely... I don't know. My biggest concern is regarding whether the team is acting on the president's orders or, like... Or the team act like did he did Biden specifically tell his team to be compliant, or is it just the team making the decision to be compliant themselves? So the weird part with any presidential administration is that we honestly don't know. Because theoretically, Biden and all of his executors and advisors should you know, have individual opinions, but overall work as a team. But also, Biden has the ability to fire all of them for whatever reason he wants. So they might be doing it to hold the job kind of thing, even though they should, mm-hmm. might they shouldn't be, if that makes sense. Well, I feel like definitely being compliant with the investigation is the right way to go. So a uh, counter to the way Trump's team responded to it with ignorance and basically like didn't they say it was um, unconstitutional i feel like i heard that somewhere probably yeah Uh, you were like nodding your head i wasn't sure um yeah i'm like multi triple tasking right now but yes all right on Better or worse news, depending on what side of the aisle you like to sway, Trump started his 2024 campaign. Now, some facts about this. The, he's, he doesn't have a ton of funding. He has a significant lack of funding. The amount of funding he has this... Um, excuse me, this campaign go around is around $11.8 million smaller than what he had on his last campaign. Now, Trump is a wild card. A lot of people don't know what's going to happen when it comes to him. Speaking on the more personal opinion side effects, I do not believe that the majority of Republicans like Trump. However, I feel he has this small kind of sector that bends to his will, everything he says, you know, that kind of stuff. They idolize him. The only thing I can see coming out of Trump running for president again is that the Republican Party is going to split sides and the Democratic candidate is going to win only because of that reason. What are your thoughts? Um, I feel... I feel like a lot of the success of a candidate depends on who they're running against. Which we don't really know for sure yet. Because I feel like a lot of people in the 2020 election felt like both candidates, like including myself, felt like both candidates were not good enough for the presidency. And it was kind of like, which is a lesser of two evils situation. 
And if that happens again, I feel like Trump could have a chance at winning. But if there is, I feel like there's a good possibility that someone is going to come up who both, not both sides can agree with, but the majority of one of the sides is able to agree with instead of it being like, oh, half the Republicans like Trump and half of them hate them or half the Democrats love Biden, half of them hate them. I feel like I'm hoping that somebody is going to come up that more people can agree with instead of it just being like, oh, well, I'd rather this person than that person. We do have the Libertarian Party, which is gaining popularity. Is it enough popularity to win the next presidency? Only God knows, really. Yeah, and um, I saw in the article that you shared, um, there were some other names that were brought up that had significantly more funding than Trump. Ron DeSantis is a big one, a big one for the Republican Party. A lot of people like him. He is currently the governor of Florida. And we all know what's going on in Florida. He, he with, was the author of the Don't Say Gay Bill. He was not the author of the Don't Say Gay Bill. That was a congressperson. Mm. But he he's the governor of the state that passed the Don't Say Gay Bill. He was currently trying to ban African-American studies in the school system because we are indoctrinating the kids by teaching them that Black people exist. <laughs> so, you know, he is very strong about what he believes. Yep, and unfortunately, uh, in my opinion, lots of people agree with him. And I really hope, when if it came down to it, if it came down to him or Trump, who would you pick? I would not vote. Yeah. I, I wouldn't, like... I know the whole saying where it's like, well, if you don't vote, then you can't complain. It's like, well, I don't want either of them to win. Like, it's not like I'm going to complain if only one of them loses. Yep. All right. Some. Oh, this one's you. Yes. Yeah, so the House has the House has passed a bill to end the COVID nineteen health public health emergency. And twenty twenty, I think it was. Was it January? Yeah, January 2020. Which um, was by Trump, just saying. Yes, the uh, they implemented the dec- a declaration that would put uh, the United States into a public health emergency uh, related to COVID-19. And it has remained that way until now. And the House has just recently passed a bill saying that they're going to take the U.S. out of this state. Um, but this does not mean that... Um, this has been implemented yet. It still needs to go past the Senate, and I believe to the president? Yep. Yes. Uh, so it needs to go to the Senate and the president, who... Um, the Senate, they are not saying that they think it's going to pass, given that most of the people who want to um, stop the public health emergency are Republicans, and the Senate is controlled by the Democrats, right? Yes, Senate is Democratic, House is Republican. Yeah, so the Senate is controlled by a Democratic Party, so they are believing, nobody like nobody can know for sure, but they believe that it is not going to pass the Senate because most of them don't want, most of them are concerned with uh, largely that... Uh, where was I reading this? Funding is a huge part of this. Funding and also there was the border issue. Um, where people were saying that uh, if during the pandemic, the health emergency, there was a, I don't know if it was a bill or if there's a different name for it. Put into, something was put into place called like something 42, uh, Title 42, which allowed... Um, the administration to basically say that uh, if you were sick or you weren't your public your public health I guess was not 
um, didn't meet your, their standards, then you could not be entered into the country. And a lot of people are worried that if um, the public health emergency goes away, this will go away too. And then lots of people will be allowed into, like thousands of migrants per day will be allowed into the country without the nece- what they're considering necessary policy- policies in place. And uh, what are your opinions on what needs to happen in order for the public health emergency to go away? Well, technically speaking, what needs to happen is the Senate needs to get their act together. Um, I will say public opinion on this is very not what it should be because Mm -hmm. I feel like the public is like, oh, those darn Democrats thinking they're still in a pandemic. I mean, come on, people are not getting sick anymore, blah, 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 blah. Um, You're right. They're not. The only reason they're doing this is because of funding. Money tells the true tale. Mm Mm-hmm. And, like, we, yes, COVID has been, like, more on the rise recently, but it's, we know more how to handle it now, so I don't think it's really a big emergency anymore, where, like, yes, I'm I'm not saying, like, oh, everybody needs to stop wearing masks, no matter where you are and what you're doing, oh, um, no one needs to get the vaccines anymore, the boosters. Like, yes, still do those things when necessary. And when you, like, I'm not, like, some people don't want to, that's okay, because everyone has their different opinions. But, <laughs> um, like, in my opinion, yes, get your boosters. I just scheduled mine for Friday. Um, in my opinion, I don't care if you're vaccinated or not. Look at us having know, opposing opinions. Like, I just feel like, If you have the option to, like, again, most people, lots of people don't have the option to. I feel like it's necessary as much as, like, the flu vaccine and all that kind of stuff is, like, just, like, a normal part of life now for most people. We need to make a future episode because me and you disagree on this. We need to make an episode about us debating it, I think. Hmm. That'd be interesting in the future. I feel like I just share a lot of views with my... um. One of my teachers uh, last year was really big on, like, like you could not step near her if you didn't have a mask on. Um, yeah, well, I mean, to each their own. Yeah, and it was just, like, I don't know, we talked about it a lot in school. And I, like, wait, uh, are you pro or against flu vaccines? I... I'm all for people getting the flu vaccine if they want to. I personally am not vaccinated for the flu and never will be if I have that option. Yeah, I agree with all, um, with, with, with all the vaccines. I feel like it's all up to the person. Just like, in my opinion, I would get it. Um, but like, I'm not going to like defriend somebody over them or get into arguments with people. Let's talk about that in a future episode because we can rabbit hole and dive deep into all that fun stuff. That is true. Um, Let's see. What is Biden's take on um, the... Oh, why is my brain dying right now? The pandemic is over, Bill? Yeah. (laughs) I'm not really sure. I haven't done any research into what his beliefs are on this. But I also know that this, like, really just happened. So he might not have a response right now. Yeah, that's what I got. Uh, Do we have to, like, pause? No, I don't think so. Unless, let me, I'll be right back. We might have to. And then finish the habit. I'm talking to you. Well, I know you might, I don't know. That's fine. Yeah, we can keep going. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know what Biden has said about it. And do you have anything to add for this? I know you said that you know a lot about it. 
About what? The pandemic. The pandemic is over, though. I don't know that much about it. Because, again, this, like, just happened. There's not a lot of information out there about it. When did this happen? (sighs) Fairly recently. I heard about it today for the first time, but that means absolutely nothing. Let's see. Oh, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. All right. And it didn't pass by much. It only passed by 10 votes. By 10 votes, yeah. Well, they have a very, the Republicans have a very, very slim majority, as such was shown by the wonderful speaker vote we had going on earlier. That was fun. Yeah, know. fun times. All right. George Santos. Before, di- I'm going to, di- before me diving deep into him, what are your thoughts on him? Uh, just from what you've heard and what you know about so far i'll be quite honest i've heard that he's been pretty controversial recently but i have not taken the time to delve into it okay so i'm going to talk a little bit about things he has lied about he lied about where he went to high school he also lied about where he went to college he lied about working on wall street he lied about where his funds came from he lied about fine fun bleh. He lied about founding an animal charity. He lied about swindling a disabled vet whose dog was dying. Nobody really knows if he's married, who he's married, or if he's ever married before. He lied about his mother's death, saying it was related to 9-11. She did not die on 9-11. He claimed that his grandmother was a Holocaust victim. She is not a Holocaust victim. He did not have any employees that died in the Pulse suiting. He claims he's Jewish, but also grew up and continues to go to a conservative Roman Catholic church. He may or may not be a drag queen in his past. Nobody really knows. He claims he was on Hannah Montana, but there's no evidence of that. And the list just goes on and on and on and on and on. So... He's lied about many things in his life. Um, and yet he's still in Congress. So that's an interesting fact. I will say, I don't know what went on between him and current Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, but he is not on any of the current committees in Congress. So I will say that is an interesting I have one question. You mentioned that he may or may not have been a drag queen. Uh, Did he claim that he was and the people are saying that he's not actually? Or did he claim that he wasn't and people are saying that he was? So I'm going to quote right from this article I'm reading. As Santos's bizarre... It's not the article in the link. But as Santos's bizarre scandal unfurled, more figures from Santos's past came forward revealing details about his life like Brazilian drag queen Ula Richard, who claims she was friends with Santos in 2005 when he was also performing as a drag queen in the Rio de Janeiro area. According to Rudos, another friend said Santos aspired to be Miss Gay Rio de Janeiro and that he was regularly participating in drag pageants. He went on Twitter saying that it was categorically false and he had fun. He had a little bit of fun at a festival. Sue me for having a life. Hmm. so you know there's that I don't get why you would lie about that though like to get into congress yeah but like it's doing that is kind of assuming that there's something wrong with being a drag queen which there's he also he lied that he was almost assassinated he was not ever almost assassinated Wow. So there's a, there's a lot there's a lot going on with him. <laughs> I think there's some some hidden mental issues. <laughs> but what you gonna do? Oh my god! Every time you say that, my head just goes straight to Hades down. 
that was amazing. I'm still in awe about it. It was crazy. It was. Great, fantastic show. And then the stage opening up. Mm -hmm. And now, like, listening to the soundtrack, it's, like, leveled up because I'm picturing what was happening on stage in my head. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. All right, go and do you have anything else you want to say about George Santos? Uh, what's this thing about, like, the article that you did put? What did you want to talk about with that? Oh, I just put it because I needed to put something for George Santos. But that is saying that um, just the funding from his campaign isn't really, like, he's... The, he wasn't completely honest with where he got the funding from for his campaign. Hmm. Which isn't technically illegal, but it's a not nice thing to do. Yeah, any kind of lie, legal or not, is going to get you into trouble. If you're going into any political reign or any professional field, really. Yep. You want to talk about... Mr. Mike, who is continuing on with our favorite trend of classified documents. Yes, so after um, they found the, uh, the documents in Biden's home, uh, well, one of Biden's homes, they decided to, uh, I believe this is what happened, they decided to check uh, Mike Pence's home in... Indiana. Indiana. Um, and... Uh, classified documents were found and he turned them over to the FBI. Um, and the, they are all saying that, uh, they're trying to figure out how the documents got into his Indiana home because, um, did Mike Pence have, what was his role before he was, um, on Trump's vice president? He served as governor of Indiana for a few years, and then he turned into a senator, and then he went to vice president. And the only reason I know this is because of this wonderful book here, which is taking me forever to finish, but his deck, his, um, whatchamacallit, biography. Autobiography. Autobiography. Yeah, that one. So there are multiple places that he could, multiple areas that he could have gotten these uh, documents, and they have not disclosed yet. Same with Biden's, um, same with Biden's situation, what the level of uh, classification was, or what the documents said. Which, of course, they're not going to say what the documents said because they're classified. But nothing has been released as far as that is concerned. But, uh. They're basically, I believe they're being pretty compliant as well. Um, I feel like nobody wants to repeat what happened with Trump's uh, situation where they're just like lying the entire time and avoiding. So they're trying to go through it pretty quickly. And uh, yeah, so Pence is agreeing when the FBI requested to pick up documents. Uh. And yeah, so there's not, I don't know what it's else to say. Like, it's kind of just. Yeah, there's not much about this. I just stuck it in here because it's like everybody on all parties are stealing documents. Mm -hmm. Like the situation is pretty similar to Biden's situation where like not much is known at the moment. And all we can really say is speculation and just judge how they're reacting to it. Which I don't believe... Pence has made a any statement except for him saying that he was unaware of the existence of the documents. Which, you know... Oh, wait, no, he didn't say that. Uh, somebody else said that. Somebody else said for him that he didn't know about the uh, sensitive or classified documents. All right. Anything else? Um, no. All right. To, Let's tr- I'm not going to say that name because I don't know how to say his first name. We're going to talk about Tyree. Tyree, I want to say. Tyree Nicholas. So. Nichols very or Nicholas? prevalent in the news. What happened? He was stopped by the police for a traffic stop. 
According to the police came, the police report he was violent. The violentness about it is up to question if you watch the actual video. He was subdued on the ground and then beaten by the police. He went to the hospital and died three days later. The police report, quote, said that he started to fight the officers and at one point grabbed their guns. However, that claim was never found in the police body cam footage videos. The police report also did not mention the fact that the officers were punching and kicking Nicholas. So, the report also listed one of the police that were there for the scene, a, quote, victim. The report also stated that the use of pepper spray and taser stun gun had no effect on Nicholas, which could indicate that he was drugged at the time. But is that cause to beat the crap out of them? I don't know. All of the five officers involved were immediately placed on leave and then charged with second-degree murder. The EMTs involved with this scene have has also been fired. No charges made against them yet, but they were all fired. What's interesting is that nobody really knows who wrote the police report. However, the police report mentions both the Memphis Police Department and the Shelby County Sheriff's Office. So whether it was a police officer or a sheriff, nobody really knows. Now, you people are upset that about the, that. Uh, you mentioned that the EMT, the uh, uh, ambulance people, I don't know what roles they were, but that they were also fired. Uh, would you like to explain the reasoning behind that? They were fired. So... The EMTs were called to the scene of the traffic stop due to a person being pepper sprayed. I'm assuming based on all the evidence that that person being pepper sprayed was Nicholas. They treated him for the pepper spray and did not treat him for all the wounds he sustained while being beat up. So because of that, they like weren't doing their job in a way. So they all got fired. Mm -hmm. So... Naturally, protests ensued because, once again, a black man has been killed by the police. So, you know. Uh, It's like, it's happening too often. Like, like the first time it hit major news outlets, lots of people were like, oh, well, it's just a one-time thing. You can't say anything about it. But then it just kept happening. And some of them make... uh, national news some of them don't some of them only make local news but it's still happening all over the place so here's the situation with the emts the departments and this is directly quoted from cnn's website the department of investigation found that two emts responded based on the initial nature of the call and information they were told on the scene and failed to conduct an accurate patient assessment of mr nicholas the third emt just stayed in the fire truck the whole time hmm so, not, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to think of it all. So, I'm glad to know that we are ending on this 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 note, right? Great. Woohoo. Is there any positive news that you know of that's been going on in the world? Um I don't know. <laughs> not really. Me either. God, it's just been like, I feel like even if there are good things, they're just being overshadowed because like, of course you can't, like if you're gonna, if you're gonna choose which thing is gonna make headlines, people are gonna go for the negative thing. Let's see, some some news, the UK government rejected a petition to ban LGBTQ oh, yeah. content in schools. That's, like, that's, yes, that's yeah. good, but it's also just like the bare minimum uh, this one isn't good, but Utah banned gender affirming care for people under the age of eighteen. Are you just looking through the stuff you've sent me? Yep, because I send you all all the stuff, and I'm like, look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh, it's so, all yeah. bad. Wait, let me do a quick Google search. Positive 
things that happened January 2023. The Good News Hub. That sounds promising. Robin Hood French energy workers on strike gives free power to schools, hospitals, and low-income housing. Um, 92-year-old flood victim reunited with long-lost cat. Aw. That's cute. <laughs> that is cute. Oh, the foot is adorable, too. Um... Uh, cargo ships are becoming more fuel efficient. Oh, this is good. Um, a law passed in the U.S. removed the mandate for animal testing on all new drugs. Woohoo! It should probably just be banned, but... Why, I wonder why that started in the first place. That'd be an interesting thing to look at. Uh, my assumption would be that it was because they decided that instead of risking human life, it was, I guess, they considered it was less uh, or, like, more beneficial to humans to test it on animals because they didn't consider them as valuable. That's a good point. Anything and, else? Uh, no. <laughs> uh yeah, everything else is like just like random stuff, oil usage, that kind of stuff. Anything else you want to add to this tea time? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. One thing uh, that I just saw that's a little interesting, but doesn't need to really make it on the episode. Um, a chipped mug painting of Charles II, uh, that was bought at a flea market for two euros or no that's the pound symbol two pounds just sold for fourteen thousand pounds boy that's one lucky uh person that's a lot of money to make from a chipped mug the painting's not even that good (laughs) i'm gonna send you this all right well i'm I'm stopping thanks for tuning in Shirley Mental is a weekly podcast released on Mondays at 3 p.m. Don't forget to follow us at at Shirley Mental Podcast on all socials. This is Caleb. And Jeanette. You can find us personally on all socials at at cable underscore 2431. And at Jeanette Ireland. This was Shirley Mental. See you next time.